Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about an M8095 bore Mauser carbine in 7x57mm calibre that was used in the Anglo Boer War of 1899-1902. Uh, the uh, serial number is 3079. Uh, it's got a matching action to bolt, which is nice to have. Uh, I've reason to believe that this probably belonged to a, a famous Africana or a famous Boer. He was an officer who took part in the Anglo Boer War and I'm pretty sure he used this carbine throughout the campaign. I'm talking about uh, Johannes. I'm talking about Johannes Ludovic Pretorius. His nickname was Lurt, and he came with quite some pedigree. His uh, great grandfather was Andres Pretorius, who was a famous fur trekker leader. This is when the uh, the Boers left the Cape Colony in around about 1835 to 1840. They uh, they left British domination. They didn't uh, enjoy British rule. English uh, was the only major language. The Boers wanted their own language, their own traditions, so they trekked into the unknown central uh, southern Africa and after many, many years and tribulations and uh, campaigns with local African tribes, they formed their two republics, the Orange Free State, OVS, and the Transvaal or the ZAR. Now, as I said, uh, his great-grandfather was Andres Pretorius. His grandfather was the first president of the ZAR, that's the South African Republic and his name was Martinus Vessels Pretorius. Uh, his grandmother was the daughter of Petra Tiff, and Petra Tiff also was one of the uh, early Furchaka leaders. He was sadly massacred by Dingaan the Zulu in 1838, together with a, a number of his men. Now, uh, his father, this is Lurt's father, was uh, Commandant Henning Pretorius. He was known as the father of the ZAR artillery. And when I say ZAR artillery, it's the actual ZAR starts artillery, and for, for now that translates to state artillery. So Henning Pretorius uh, was the, the mastermind really. He imported new, up-to-date German and French uh, artillery pieces, 75mm Krups and 75mm Creosot guns. Uh, also, the, uh, it was followed by the 155mm Schneider Creosot long toms. But he sadly died in 1897, just prior to the Boer War. Now, prior to that, in around about 1890, uh, Lord Pretorius, his son, uh, was keen on the military. Uh, he joined the Pretoria Freiwilliger Cavalry Corps, and that's the Pretoria Volunteer Cavalry Corps. Uh, he, he was quite active in that, uh, but he really wanted to join the artillery. He'd spoken to his father, and father wasn't really keen on him joining the state artillery, I guess because he was the father and the commandant. He didn't really want his son joining the ranks. But eventually he relented and he said that Lurt could actually write the uh, officer's examination. So he did that, he wrote the officer's exam and uh, in around about 1896 he qualified as a second lieutenant in the ZAR State Artillery. Now he went on a campaign uh, with one of the local, against one of the local African tribes who was Chief Mafefu. I think I have that pronunciation correct. But come the uh, 1899, he was put in charge of the 3rd Riding Battery. That's the 3rd Raidende Batterie. It was also known as the French Battery, or the France Batterie. And the reason for that was because that particular battery was equipped with 75mm quick-firing Creosot French guns. Uh, come September 1899, just prior to war breaking out, Lurt was sent to the Natal Front. Uh, war broke out on the 11th of October 1899. And the first campaign and the first battle in, in Natal was the attack on Talana. Well, uh, the Boers crept up, and we've discussed this in one of my previous videos. They crept up onto the hill overlooking Dundee. And in fact, it was Lurt Pretorius who fired the first shot. And his first shot landed slap bang in the middle of the British camp. Uh, a battle followed, uh, and uh, General Penn Simmons, who was in charge of the British uh, troops in that area, was mortally wounded. Uh, the British finally drove the, uh, the Boers off the hill and they made their way eventually to Ladysmith. The next battle that um, Lurt was involved in was the Battle of Ladysmith, or Modest Sprite, called by the Boers. Uh, the Battle of Ladysmith, we've covered before as well, was a disaster for the British again. Uh, they lost about 900 men taken prisoner of war. Uh, after that, um, he took part in further battles uh, on the Tugela River. The first battle was uh, the, the huge battle of Colenso on the 15th of December 1899. And this was the third, uh, third battle of Black Week, as it became known. 
where Sir Edward Buller, who was in charge of the British Army, uh, decided to attack the Boer positions uh, near the little town of Colenso on the Tugela River. Now, it turns out that Lord Pretorius was in charge of the artillery under General Louis Boerta. He'd placed his guns very cleverly. They were all camouflaged up in the hilltops. Uh, unlike the British who lined their guns up, he had placed his guns individually in most cases, and as I said, they were well camouflaged. During the battle, uh, he, he was actually uh, on horseback and he was riding, was seen riding from gun to gun, encouraging his men, telling them what to do, and completely disregarded any fire, British fire. Uh, after the, uh, the battle, uh, Louis Bourdes commended him highly. He said, you know, I've never seen such courage, and this is certainly, certainly a very important young man that's gonna do things in, in this army. Uh, after that, uh, the Battle of Colenso, uh, Buller re retreated, um, he lost his nerve, he was slightly wounded by the end of the day, and he ordered his troops to, to leave the field. In so doing, um, the, the Boers had decimated all his guns, all the gun crew were almost dead, uh, almost all dead, should I say, and Buller made the decision to leave the guns as they were, so he lost 10 of his artillery pieces right near the Tugela River, and in military parlance, that's the, the height of disgrace to lose your artillery in a battle. So that was Colenso and the end of that big battle. Uh, there were further battles in and around uh, Tugela on the Tugela River. The, uh, the, one, the big one was Spion Kop on the 24th of January 1900. We've covered this one as well before, where the British entrenched themselves on what they thought was the summit of the hill, but in fact turned out not to be the, the summit at all. They were enfiladed by Boer fire from about three different directions. And the Boer artillery took, artillery took a very, very prominent part in that battle. Uh, Pretorius was uh, once again prominent uh, in his role in Spionkop. Uh, and once again, this turned out to be a battle in favour of the Boers. Both sides had left the, uh, the crest of the mountain. At the end of the day, uh, the British withdrew completely. So in actual fact, it was left to the Boers to be the victors. Now, after Spionkop, uh, there were other battles um, which followed on the Tugela River, Falkrantz and also Pitter's Hill. That was the final battle on, uh, on the Tugela River, close to Colenso, where the British finally broke through the Boer lines and made their way through to Ladysmith. Now the Boers completely uh, left the field. They left Ladysmith, they headed back towards the Transvaal. They uh, took up positions on the Biggersberg and eventually they retreated again. Uh, he went, uh, went to Pretoria and then eventually Pretorius was sent down to the Orange Free State to try and stop Lord Roberts his advance towards uh, Johannesburg and Pretoria. So he took part in the Battle of Sand River, which we've mentioned before in the Cancross Carbine, and then retreated back, this is Pretorius, retreated back to the Transvaal. Uh, he took uh, part in the battles of Diamond Hill and also Dalmanutha. And in both instances, he was in charge of long toms. At Diamond Hill, he had a long tom, which was actually uh, mounted on a rail truck. Uh, and he was very successful using that, once again, being so accurate as he was. And then Dalmanutha was the final battle where he was also uh, directing Long Tom Fire. Uh, that was, as I said, the last real battle of the Boer War. Uh, after that, it uh, deteriorated into guerrilla warfare. The Boers moved back to the Eastern Transvaal towards, towards Leidenburg. Uh, once again, he took part in battles around that area and as well as the Battle of Long Tom Pass, which was the last battle that the Boers used their Long Toms. <clears throat> they were running out of ammunition, and because they decided to adopt guerrilla warfare, there was no point in dragging around these huge big fortress guns, so they blew them up and uh, the remains of the guns were thrown into the river. Um, as I said, he was involved in further skirmishes in that area, and eventually Louis Boerta sent him on a, a dangerous mission across uh, the Transvaal, through British lines, past Pretoria, to the Western Transvaal to see General Quirce de la Rey, who we've mentioned before, he was the Lion of the West. So um, Luet managed to do that. He evaded all the British outposts, went through to uh, De La Rey, delivered his message, and then made his way back to the Eastern Transvaal. Um, he once again was involved in several skirmishes with British troops, <clears throat> but finally his luck ran out on the 18th of December, 1901. So he'd basically done over two years of warfare. Uh, he was captured along with 23 of his other artillery men by British troops. Now, this all rings true because this carbine uh, was obviously taken back to the UK as a trophy, probably by a British officer, I would imagine. You'll see we have British proof marks on the barrel. 
uh, which was, was the case with all uh, weapons taken back to the UK, they had to be reproofed. So this has got British proof marks and the person that I bought this from, the collector that I bought this from, had actually bought this originally from a collector who bought the, the carbine in the UK. And evidently the story goes that when he bought this many, many years ago, back probably in the 60s, uh, evidently nobody wanted it but just sort of lay there. So he picked it up at, at quite, a, quite a good price, which wasn't the case with myself. So there we have it. Uh, this, this little carbine has travelled from uh, South Africa to the UK and then was brought out to Australia by a collector and I'm very pleased to say it's landed up in my hands. As we will show you, unfortunately, um, at some stage one of the previous owners has, has sanded this stock, which is enough to make a collector weep. Uh, it's taken away all the, uh, the, you know, the, the fine points of the carving, but we'll show you that. Uh, on the right hand side of the butt, he's got his name J.L. Pretorius, very neatly carved in here. And on the opposite side of the butt that we'll show you, is the, uh, the coat of arms of the ZAR. Uh, it's very, very similar to one of the badges which we'll show you. And obviously it was copied from a badge. <coughs> Excuse me. What I believe happened uh, is I suspect that he initially wrote his name uh, in pencil on the butt and then probably handed it over to one of his artistic uh, artillery men or someone who was a, a pretty good woodcarver and, and put the name on the butt or carved the name on the butt. Now, Pretorius is a fairly common name in South Africa. You certainly encounter it quite often. So I've looked through uh, all the statistics. I've looked at the number of boars who were captured, around about 20 to 24, with the initials JL. There were another 15 JL Pretoriuses who were uh, listed as veterans after the war. And there were 14 men who claimed their Anglo-Boer War Medal at the end of the war. This is the 1920s. Uh, I've managed to get uh, paperwork for all those men and we've been through painstaking and looking at all the uh, handwritings and the signatures on all the JL Pretoriuses and I feel quite confident that this, this particular Pretorius here was Major uh, Lord Pretorius. Uh, I know for a fact that, uh, well I knew beforehand that he'd applied for the medal and he was also awarded the prestigious Decorati for Trova Dents, which is the Decoration for Faithful Service, which is equivalent to the British DSO. In actual fact, uh, in the First World War, quite a few ex-Boers won the DSO and having won a DTD as well, they had to wear the DTD in front of the DSO in the South African Order of Precedence. So yeah, Lord Pretorius ended up being uh, decorated with the DTD. There were only 662 of those awards issued to Boers, mainly officers. Um, well, that's about the end of the story. Uh, I don't think I can tell you anything else except for the fact that I'm very pleased to have this in my collection and uh, I think it tells an interesting story. Thank you.